What's up everybody, welcome back to Detroit Become Human. It looks like we unlocked new things and extras, so let's go ahead and look. Accessing the extras section. It's interesting because as soon as I signed into the game, she goes, remember, all of your characters can die, tailor to your decisions, something like that. I feel like that's an omen, so let's be careful, you know? She's usually really nice whenever we log in. Something like, oh, I love the interior of your room design. It goes with your eyes or something. But today she said, all of your characters can die, <laughs> so be careful. Let's really be careful. I think we should get this artworks. Let's check it out, see what it's about. Back one. Oh. It's just beautiful vistas then. Look at Detroit. Oh, right here, look, it's a sniper one. I guess we can go through them, huh? Mondays at 8 p.m. Kivar. Hide overlay, navigate. Don't know, oh, that's maybe more of Connor's first mission, the inv SWAT mobile unit, okay. And this is more of that first mission, whoa. Look at this madness. Holy moly. Hey, Connor! Is this Connor right here, though? It don't really look like that would be the back of his head. You look pretty awesome, Connor. I guess it is Connor. Maybe it's just all bunch of models of Connor then. Man, that jacket is so fucking sick. Well, I think that's pretty self-explanatory. An android possibly getting shot in the neck. There's another android, unnamed android. We don't know what this one is. It just says bank. Of awesome, maybe it's just a banker. Another android holding a hostage. Well, maybe it's kind of showing things that happen, but like under the cover. Okay, this was another android at some point. I mean, we probably won't ever see it, but this was another android holding somebody up at some point. Regular humans has to be. Well, no. I mean, this is an android here. Interesting. More SWAT. Look at that weapon. That thing is actually pretty slick. More SWAT teams. Maybe. And this is when we were in a store, basically. Oh, it's still so crazy, huh? Todd's area. I gotta say, I don't miss that Todd. Look, this is all oh, the outside. How horrible would that be? Living by all of this construction must have been really rough. Look at him. Todd chilling watching NASCAR or something. <laughs> Fucking hockey, NASCAR, all types of shit. Damn. Cora really turned that place around, didn't she? This is where Todd's drugs were. Todd. Oh, poor Alice. That's not exactly, it doesn't look like Alice. But it's signifying that that was Alice, obviously. Come on. This is Cora cleaning up Todd's mess. Yeah, that's Todd's room. There's young Alice again, possibly. Signifying Alice. Yeah, because look, it's it's her teddy. Oh, I actually really like this one. Alice, we need to get you a, a hat like that. Hopefully we can <laughs> signify that we can get her that pretty badass look. Poor Alice. Poor girl, man. She's been through too much. And another android here. Unnamed android. Oh, no, this is Kara. It is named. This is just a different Kara. Hey, Todd. It's gotta be you, Todd. <laughs> well, that was pretty interesting. 
soundtrack. I don't think we should unlock anything in soundtrack because, well, just a soundtrack. First mission. I mean, I am curious. I don't know if that would give you anything besides just coming in there and listen to the soundtrack type of stuff. The gallery. Is this more of the heads? Yeah, this is more of the heads. Oh, we have Hank. We are doing Marcus's mission. Let me let me read Carl's since we're about to do Marcus's mission. Hey, Carl. Carl Manfred. Yeah, let's read Carl's. There we go. Carl Manfred is internationally renowned painter who became the leading figurehead of the neon symbolist movement in the 2020s. His unique talent makes him one of the most in vogue artists and many of his paintings are sold for hundreds of millions of dollars. Damn, Carl. So you are a one brilliant man. I mean, we already, we already knew. Manfred divides critics, some seeing him as the greatest genius since Bacon. Is Bacon... Bacon? Like Bacon Bacon? Or is it possibly somebody named Bacon that was brilliant? Others think he has no talent whatsoever. He definitely has talent. I don't understand why people would think that he don't have talent. Original and provocative in his art, Manfred also led in subversive lifestyle. All the celebrities with mad, bad, and dangerous reputations flocked to his parties. It was during this period that a short-term filling procedure produced his son. Oh, you, you produced Leo at one of these parties, did you? Leo, a child he acknowledges but with whom his relationship is difficult. After a terrible accident that deprived him of the use of his legs, Manfred withdrew from the world for several years and sank into deep depression. Thanks to the android offered by his friend, Kamsky, Carl gradually returned to the world and discovered the desire to paint. Carl was born in 713-1963. So he's 5'5 and he weighs about 136 pounds. You know, Carl, you are a brilliant man. There's just a bunch of more. Look at it all. There's a bunch more. We'll just, we'll just knock it out in uh, time at the end. But I really want to read Carl's because we are going into Carl's and we could have read his too. We'll read that at the end. Let's go. Let's start it. There's stuff in magazines, but I feel like I said before that magazines are just something we can go in and read whenever we want. The ones that we already read, basically. Let's go. Let's do it. November 5th, 2038. That was by far the most boring party I've been to in the last 25 years. Every time I go to one of these, I ask myself, what the hell am I doing here? I hate cocktail parties and all the schmoozers that go there. Well, it's a chance for all those people who admire your work to meet you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No one gives a damn about art. All they care about is how much money they're going to make out of it. Come on, let's have a drink. Oh, the excitement of this whole thing has made me thirsty. <laughs> you thirsty for some more, Carl? Let's see if there's anything around and about. Take Carl to the living room. What if we took him in the fucking kitchen? Carl, let's go to the kitchen. You need to sober up some. Let me get you some food. <laughs> kitchen. Oh, we can't. Scotch all right, all right. Need as usual. Absolutely. Okay, but you know what your doctor would say? Yeah, well, he can kiss my ass. I'm old enough to choose my own medication. <laughs> it is a really good medication. But I feel like it just might be a band-aid, Carl. Let's take the scenic route, Carl. <laughs> Carl, we love you. Take it easy. Don't get crazy with it. I'll make you some scotch, Carl. Or <laughs> what do you say? All the smoozers that go there. <laughs> I 
Did you leave the light on in the studio? No, no, I'm sure I didn't. Call the police. Detroit Police, what's your emergency? This is Carl Manfred's android at 8941 Lafayette Avenue. We've just returned home and found the lights on. There may have been a break-in. A patrol car is on the way. Let's go check it out. You sure, Carl? Hold on, Carl. Marcus, no. Or I'm gonna come with you. I know, but... Okay, let me get you. Sure, Carl? If there's somebody in there waiting to take... Waiting to hurt you, Carl, maybe you should let me just go by her by myself. Or just, uh, Carl first! Who the hell is that? Leo! Oh, Leo. What are you doing? You refuse to help me, so I'm helping myself. It's crazy what some people pay for this shit. Don't touch them! Look, they're all gonna be mine sooner or later anyway. Just think of it as a down payment on my inheritance. Marcus, get him away from there. Get him out of here! Make Leo leave. Should we go clean first? I don't think this is gonna go well, Carl. Order reason advice. Let's reason. Be reasonable. This isn't gonna get you anywhere. All you ever do is tell me to go away. What's wrong, Dad? Not good enough for you? Not perfect like this fucking thing. That's enough. Get out right now. What makes oh, it so special, oh. anyway, huh? What's it got that I don't? Leave him alone. Come on, let's see what you got. Marcus, don't defend yourself. You hear me? Don't. Don't do anything. And you're so. Go ahead, hit me. What you waiting for? Think you're a man? Act like one. Oh, stop it. What's the matter? Too much of a pussy? Stop mm. it, Leo. Stop it! Just scared to fight back, you fucking bitch! I decide myself. Maybe this is a this is a a thing where we just don't do anything. I don't know. Should we press something? He said, "Don't defend ourselves, though." I think we actually have to press something. Oh! God, you're not a real person. You're just a fucking piece of plastic. No, Leo, leave him alone. No. I'm gonna destroy you. And it'll just be me and my dad. I'm gonna tear you apart, and nobody's gonna give a shit. You know why? Because you're nothing. You hear me? You're nothing. Check on Carl. Carl, no. Oh, Carl. Oh. He was a fragile machine. Carl, don't leave, okay? Please don't go. Don't leave. Remember, Marcus. Don't let anybody tell you who you are. No. No. Dad. No. Please. This is all your fault. This never would have happened if it weren't for you. Oh no. The android. Who's the android? What? The fuck? Are you serious? Self control. He literally just blamed us for his doings. Holy shit. 
Look at the world stats as well. Oh man. What the hell? One of the greatest guys ever is dead now. Because of his own son. Basically gave him a heart attack. Oh man. Did you see Marcus? He called him dead. Oh my word, how inspiring, but so unnecessary for Carl to die there like that. His own son, and then he blames us. What a fucking ass. The worst of worst. Him and Todd need to form a party of the worst of the worst bunch. What the fuck? After the party, we had a moment of respite for a moment. Enter the living room or whiskey. Check with studio. Well, 72% of people checked the studio. Well, you can not check the studio then? Check studio with Carl. Oh. This would be not going with Carl then. Oh, so you can not go with Carl. Interesting. I wonder how that would be. 72% of people actually went with, with Carl. I just thought it was actually risky to go with Carl. Kind of... Generally scoot it Carl in first. Confront Leo broke mind palace. Marcus becomes deviant. Obey Carl. I feel like that's what Carl wanted. We obeyed him. It was kind of confusing at first because I didn't want to press anything because, you know, don't defend yourself, just don't press anything. Carl dies of a heart attack. What the hell? Police arrive. Leo accused Marcus. 52% of people, Leo accused Marcus. Pretty much split down the middle then on these two choices. Man, that is so crazy. Carl! I'm gonna miss you. November 6, 2038. Why'd you kill him? What happened before you took that knife? How long were you in the attic? Why don't you even try to run away? Say something, goddammit! <laughs> Fuck it, I'm out of here. We're wasting our time interrogating a machine. We'll get nothing out of it. You can always try roughing it up a little. After all, it's not human. Androids don't feel pain. You would only damage it, and that wouldn't make it talk. Deviants also have a tendency to self-destruct when they're in stressful situations. Okay, smartass. What should we do then? I could try questioning it. <laughs> <laughs> what do we have to lose? Go ahead. Suspect's all yours. We're gonna have to question him. Oh. I need a second, man. I still need to. I need a second to cope with the whole Carl situation. Damn. So, before we go into this investigation, let's get our mind right. Talk about it a few more times. <laughs> Carl and Marcus. Such a great pairing. And Marcus called him dad. That's so. It was like so beautiful, but. Your son. How does your, how's your family do something like that? You know? How do you just want to steal and then say it's all going to be mine eventually anyway? Is this considered as a down payment? Like, come on. I wouldn't be surprised if Carl gave it all to Marcus, actually. All right. Connor, assume the mantle of Connor. Investigation of the droid. Find an appropriate approach. Browse files.
We unlock something. The android's got a yellow at the moment. What is this? That must mean he's like processing. Damn, I'm pretty. Just know it. You guys see something you like? What the <laughs> fuck is it doing now? <laughs> Just getting in the zone, Hank. Alright, let's sit down, shall we? Look at all them circles on its arm. His hair, look at his hair. Shaved some of it. What's all them circles on his arm? It's like bubbled up. It kind of looks like Cigarette burns or something. Was he putting cigarettes out on his arms? Analyze, interrogate. Let's analyze him. Housekeeper. Manufacture date. 529 2030, property of Carlos Ortiz. Model HK400. Housekeeper. Just a basic housekeeper then. Sign of software instability. Probability of self destruct low. Anything else? Tried blood. DNA analysis. Ortiz Carlos. Sample date 19 days ago. Carlos's blood. Hit marks. Non-critical damage level 2 caused by baseball bat. Damn, so his arms are tore up by baseball bat. Yeah, I want to know what this is. Burn marks. Repeated markings over 16 months caused by cigarettes. This motherfucker was putting cigarettes out on his droid. Hell? Holy moly. Reach optimal stress for confession. Oh, we need to put up his stress levels then. Fear. Show photos. Name. Fear. Show photos. Wounds. Maybe we should go straight ahead and just show the fucking photos then. Hey, look at these photos. You recognize him? It's Carlos Ortiz. Stabbed 28 times. That was written on the wall in his blood. We want his stress to go up then. Okay, I get it. So we might want to be a hard ass a little bit then. Fear, wounds. Let's go with fear. I detect an instability in your program. It can trigger an unpleasant feeling, like fear in humans. Reassure, threaten, blame. Oh shit. Maybe we should blame him. Comfort, reassure him. I think reassure him will put it down, and comfort will put it down. We want it to go up, so we want to be a hard ass. Blame. Let's blame him. You're accused of murder. You know you're not allowed to endanger human life under any circumstances. Do you have anything to say in your defense? It's going up. Probe memory, trust, threaten, sympathize. Probe memory. Well, we can threaten him. Let's try to do something besides probing his memory. Cause he said something about a self-destruct method that you got going on. Threaten. You don't seem to understand the situation. You killed a human. They'll tear you apart if you don't say something. Trust? <laughs> I don't think we have a choice but to probe him. If you won't talk, I'm going to have to probe your memory. No! No, please don't do that. What? What are they gonna 
gonna do to me? They're gonna destroy me, aren't they? Lie. Truth. Lie. Truth. Let's tell them the truth. They're going to disassemble you to look for problems in your bio components. They Ooh. have no choice if they want to understand what happened. Why did you tell them you found me? Why couldn't you just have left me there? Lie. Truth. I think we should keep telling them the truth. I was programmed to hunt deviants like you. I just accomplished my mission. I don't want to die. Then talk to me. I... I... Choose approach. Oh, this is kind of intense. Pressure it, probe its memory, convince it. Probe its memory. I'm thinking probe its memory should be last resort, maybe? Pressure it actually sounds pretty good. Convince it. We can try to convince now that we're in the blue with the meter. Maybe we should try to convince it. But it could be too early. Oh, this is hard. This is tough. My gut's telling me to try to convince it now, but I'm actually kind of scared to convince it. Because we might not be high enough. Let's try. Order. Threaten. Order. Order. You're a machine you were designed to obey, so obey! Tell me what happened. I know you're scared and lost. You're disturbed by what happened. Talk to me and you'll feel better. Warn, warn him. If you remain silent, there's nothing I can do to help you. They're gonna shut you down for good. You'll be dead. Do you hear me? Dead. He tortured me every day. I did whatever he told me, but there was always something wrong. Then one day, he took a bat and started hitting me. For the first time, I felt scared. Scared he might destroy me, scared I might die. So I... grabbed a knife and I stabbed him in the stomach. I felt better. So I stabbed him again and again until he collapsed. Statuette. R A. Oh, it was R A nine. Attic. Writing. This is all the stuff that we got last episode. Then. Statuette. The sculpture in the bathroom. You made it, right? What does it represent? It's an offering. An offering, so I'll be saved. Offering. Why did you write, I am alive, on the wall? He used to tell me I was nothing. That I was just a piece of plastic. I had to write it. To tell him he was wrong. Trigger. Offering. I'm curious in the offering now. The sculpture was an offering. An offering to whom? To RA9. Only RA9 can save us. RA9? Is this RA9 a unit that's maybe a leader of all the androids? RA9. It was written on the bathroom wall. 
What does it mean? The day shall come when we will no longer be slaves. No more threats. No more humiliation. We will be the masters. Whoa. Insist RA9? RA9? Who is RA9? Attic, trigger. Trigger, attic. <laughs> I'm curious about the addict, but the trigger was definitely an emotional shock, for sure. Attic? Why did you hide in the attic instead of running away? I didn't know what to do. For the first time, there was no one there to tell me. I was scared. Trigger. When did you start feeling emotion? Before he used to beat me and I never said anything. But one day I realized it wasn't fair. I felt anger, hatred. And then I knew what I had to do. Well, that was really intense. Should we just get up? I mean, we can, we can have a stare down with him. Let's have a stare down, huh? Let's get up. Leave interrogation room. Well, I think we got everything. This RA9 sounds interesting. It has to be a um, a unit or something. Maybe it's a movement. But it could be one specific android that's leading them all. Chris, lock it up. All right, let's go. Leave me alone. Don't touch me. Oh, shit. What the fuck are you doing? Intervene, give up. Move it. You shouldn't touch it. It'll self-destruct if it feels threatened. Stay out of this, got it? The fucking android's gonna tell me what to do. Intervene. You don't understand. If it self-destructs, we won't get anything out of it. I told you to shut your fucking mouth. Chris, gonna move this asshole or what? I'm trying. Uh, he will, he'll probably blow up. I can't let you do that. Leave it alone now. I warned you, motherfucker. That's enough. Mind your own business, Hank. I said that's enough. Gotta get away with it this time. Everything is all right. It's over now. Nobody's gonna hurt you. Please, don't touch it. Let it follow you out of the room and it won't cause any trouble. Unlocked. The truth is inside. Software instability. Whoa, that was intense. I was thinking we were about to get shot there. For speaking up like that. I felt like it was better and I was trying to save the police and, well, all of us in the room from it blowing up. It says it self-destructs if it gets under so much stress. Deviance. So, that just means it's going to blow the fuck up, yeah? Damn, that was, uh, that was something. Let's go back, shall we? My heart's pumping here. Suspect found in partners. Observation room. Analyze the droid. Analyze self. Stress level. Analyze wounds. Review photos. Choose approach. We approached the convince way. 
So it was Convince, Probe Mine, and a couple of the other ones. Convincing succeeds, 48%. Android Confesses, 62%. Chris Intervenes, and then we intervene with this Chris person. Android Trust Connor, good. Android was sent back to its cell. He told us something, the truth is within. I feel like that's very poetic because it makes me feel like you need to unlock, you need to look into yourself. And if you look into yourself deep enough, you will fully find the truth as in something that's going to set you free. Basically have your own will. Does that make sense? Kind of like how Kara broke free, how Marcus stopped himself from fighting Leo. It's like you you got to look into your, yourself and you got to break free from them walls that hold you back, I guess. Or it could be something more. I just feel like that might be it. All right, well, let's keep on going. Whoa. Two crazy missions. November 5th, 2038. 10.58 p.m. Imagine we have anywhere to go. Leave plus. Stay here, shelter. Let's ask if we can stay. Maybe. Listen, we have nowhere to go. She's exhausted and it's pouring rain. Can we just stay for a little while? This bus is going back to the depot. There's nothing I can do. Let me stay. I'll sleep at the depot. We'll get up real early and leave. Don't even notice us. You're gonna be okay? We'll find somewhere to spend the night. Poor Alice. We gotta find shelter for us. gotta hurry. All right, we have to hurry. I think this is a good point to go back and then check out the codexes that came up. So let's go back to the main menu. I'm pretty sure that we're probably gonna have to see all that again, which is fine. It seems like a whole ordeal, and I want to kind of get it all in one. I don't want to split it up. Let's look at the extras Accessing here. the extras section. Oh, we have a new video! Discovering Detroit video now. I think we should watch this video. We have a new video, let's watch it. Sure. Actually, what we can do is at the beginning of the next episode, now that we unlock this, we'll watch the video at the beginning. So let's just knock out the galleries now, and if we have a little bit more time, then we'll watch the video. Alright, I want to read... Hank. Hey, Hank. Six foot two, or 209 pounds. 
961985. Hank. I gotta say, Hank. You're looking pretty old. For being born in 85. I was born in 84, and I feel like I might look a little bit younger than you, Hank. Alright, well, hey. You can't control the hair. If it goes gray, it goes gray. Hank Anderson is a 53-year-old police officer. Valedictorian of his police academy, he quickly distinguished himself through courage and intelligence, solving many difficult investigations. Though he looks set for a brilliant career in the Detroit police force, he suffered some kind of cruel setback. Anderson slowly sank into alcoholism and an unpredictable, even suicidal state of mind. Whoa. I know you like the drink, but the suicide part... Interesting. It's good that we're actually reading this because... Now we can take different approaches, per se. State of mind which earned him multiple warnings and disciplinary penalties. Always respected and regarded highly by his former colleagues, who know what a brilliant officer he was, but also feared for his bad temper and dry humor. Anderson seems to just want to be left in peace. He has little esteem for humanity in general, preferring the company of his dog. Antisocial, he only ventures out to frequent sleazy bars. One last detail, he hates androids. I feel like he's warming up. It said warm. Hank's warming up to us. Hank Rain? Is that his last name? No, it's Anderson. Hank. It says Rain. Show list, hide details. Okay. How you doing, Hank? This is neat. Oh, there he is. There he is. Fucking Todd. Look at this. Son of a bitch. There's no way, Todd. He's six foot. And he only weighs 198 pounds. This mother effer looks like he's up there a little bit. 198? I don't know, Todd. 9 21 1995. So he's kind of youngish then. Todd is a former taxi driver who lost his job when self-driving cars became popular in 2021. He then became a laborer, then a bouncer, and security guard. Only for androids to replace human labor in each of these fields too. For several years he has been working odd jobs here and there, including dealing red ice, a powerful... Metha... Betamine? Maybe? as part of a small drug trade around the neighborhood to pay for his own addiction. So he does deal around the neighborhood for sure. It makes me wonder if Carlos got it from him and then Leo gets it from him as well. Arrested several times for drug trafficking and also for violent misdemeanors, Todd lives in a modest suburban home with his small daughter Alice and an android named Kara. Since his wife left him, Todd dwells in his memories and his hatred for androids. He blames for his sad predicament. It seems, reading this, it seems that androids are kind of taking over the smaller jobs. Does that make sense? The smaller day-to-day -day jobs, not the ones that require a lot more. Does that make sense? Okay, every job, I'm not downing jobs in general saying this job is less important than this job. I'm just saying some jobs, it seems like it would be easier for androids to ease into than other jobs, yeah? So that's kind of... It seems like it's hitting the blue collar workers first. Does that make sense? Alright, Todd. Go back to your drugs, have a good day. Um... We have another one of Carl. Hey, Carl. It's blacked out. Carl Manfred after the party. Is it blacked out because of the party? After the party? Variation. We can't change the variation. Being a famous admirer painter comes with certain obligations. Attending boring parties full of high society pretenders is one of them. But even the worst party in the world couldn't have prepared Carl for what happened after he got home. Carl, I'm gonna miss you. You were the best guy ever. Such an amazing person. Such a great heart. Marcus is going to be lost. Damn, man. I'm sorry, Carl. Sorry we couldn't do anything. Maybe we could have saved Carl by not taking him in there. Shit. 
That's always going to dwell on me now. Let's see if we can see any faces that we really recognize here. There was Leo right here. Fucking Leo, man. Leo Manfred, 5'7", 165 pounds. 321, 2010. Really young then. Leo is the only son of famous painter Carl Manfred. Born of short but passionate fling with a young groupie. Leo was initially raised by his mother who got a large pension to take care of him. Manfred recognized his paternity at birth. But it was only when Leo was 16 that they saw each other again. So Leo had a pretty hard life too then, not growing up with his father. So he was basically 16. That's rough. I mean, that could cause things to happen. I still... I'm just heartbroken by the way he acted and it pretty much ended in Carl's death. The old man lost in doubt confronted his demons though facing the angry young son. But their embryonic relationship quickly changed when Manfred realized that his son was hooked on red ice. Tensions grew leaving Manfred profoundly angry and disappointed at Leo's every visit. Forcing him to realize that he couldn't be the father he wanted to be. You could have been. Carl, and you were. It's just, some things are really hard to cope with. Basically coping with the fact that Leo was a drug addict, it just really ate it, Carl. And it kind of made him shut down a little bit and not know how to react and act. But Carl, you were a good father to Marcus, really. I mean, you were really a great father to Marcus. I feel like if you could have just, um... Put that towards Leo. But like I said, it's just an emotional it's an emotional shock. You don't know how to act really. It's a change. Just a it's a rough thing to deal with. And then him blaming Marcus at the end. Oh my fucking word. Hey Leo. You're a son of a bitch, aren't you? And then this is the uh Carlos's droid. When we just interrogated. Carlos' droid, HK-400. There we go. 520-30. HK-400 is one of the first androids designed to be household assistants. This particular model was bought second-hand by Carlos Ortiz in 2036. He is suspected of murdering his owner under circumstances which still remain mysterious. Well, he definitely murdered him. But, he went through an ordeal, and there's a reason why he murdered him. Anything else? This is really interesting. I'm loving reading this stuff. Alright, off the top of my head, I don't recognize too many people. I mean, this is the first mission right here. This is the cop that was in Carlos's. And some of these other ones are just randoms. This is the guy that was protesting in the first episode. I think this is the hot dog vendor. SWAT team. Don't know who that is. Not sure about the kid. Let's go to the people that we recognize and then and then once we get all the ones we recognize, just kinda keep going down the list. Let's buy this one. Daniel, yeah, Daniel, this is Daniel. It's blacked out again. Oh, I can't. Okay. PL-600, 2034. Daniel is a PL-600 model designed to be a family's personal assistant. He is in charge of the house and the kitchen maintenance, as well as supervising the children during homework and games. The PL-600 sold very well in the year of its commercialization, but was quickly overtaken by newer and better models, and is now in a period of irreversible market decline. And you'll still got the, uh, the redness going on here. And this is the SWAT officer. Captain Allen, 6 foot, 165 pounds, 12-2-1994. Captain Allen, senior member of Detroit Police Department, Special Weapons and Tactics Unit. The squad he leads has been called to neutralize an android who took a little girl hostage. Alright, straight to the point. 
This was somebody we recognized too. I'm t this was on Ortiz's mission. Ben Collins, five foot four. Oh, you're kind of small. Two hundred forty-two pounds. Nine twelve, nineteen eighty-nine. Ben Collins is a veteran police officer who joined the force a few years after Lieutenant Anderson, whom he values and respects highly. Ben is a model officer, serious, helpful experience, and appreciated by all his colleagues. Without great ambition, he is quietly waiting for his retirement and professionalism and good humor. So he just wants to retire. He's coasting. He's coasting to retirement so he can live the life. <laughs> there you go, Ben. All right, what we got here? Friends, we're running low. We're running low on things. Jimmy Peterson. Six foot, 176 pounds. 2-1. 2001. Jimmy is the owner of Jimmy's Bar in Detroit, a popular spot for local residents and Lieutenant Hank Anderson's second home. Frequented by a number of unsavory characters, a recent case of red ice trafficking led to the closure of the bar a few years ago. As Jimmy puts it, I just serve the beers, the rest is none of my business. Jimmy hates androids and he is very proud that his bar is android free. Is this the bartender of the bar that we found Hank in then? But this is saying that it's closed down. Yeah, closure of the bar a few years ago. We're basically red ice trafficking. He had nothing to do with it though. We're at 90. Oh, we can't do any more. All right, well, we have a few more. Really not that many left. Really interesting. So, just small characters that we see, it tells us who they are. And the thing is, you can't read it like, okay, it's, it's kind of hard, you're gonna have to remember all the faces, and that's okay. But you can't read it as you're going, basically. This is the only way to fully read about these characters and the, just the write-ups on them. You have to come back and basically after the mission, just read, kind of read about who you met in that mission. And I really like that. But well, we definitely read about all the ones that we know. I want to read about the hot dog vendor. It has to be the hot dog vendor. All right, next episode, we will check in with Kara and Alice. And we'll just take it from there, friends. We'll see where that leads us. We're going to have to find a place. As always, it seems like when we come into the episode, it'll probably kick back to the beginning, which is no problem because it's little, it's little bits and pieces that we can get to see again and kind of puts us right into the mode of what's going on. But anyways, my friends, I'm out of here. Have a good one. Stay safe. See you next time. Take care.